Upon learning that I had OCD, I wanted to find a way to do my own CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, or even to pry more into old compulsions I had as a kid, as some seemed to be returning. So I find this workbook on Amazon and proceed to not touch it because I was already working with my therapist with much success. But skimming my way through it more recently, I found it surprising how close to home these activities and anecdotes hit for me. So I thought I'd talk about the book and a few of the OCD relevant memories it brought up for me. Let's dive into the Obsessive Compulsive Disorder Diary, a self-help diary with CBT activities to challenge your OCD by Charlotte Dennis. What a mouthful. First off is a page to sign your name and a message below it that I really appreciate. If at any moment you feel too distressed to complete a page, that's okay. Rip out the page, throw it away, or save it for later. Do what works for you. As someone that, as previously stated, got the book and immediately ignored it and, I'll be honest, I dismissed it too, I really appreciate that note. I think that when I was in the thick of an OCD episode, the knowledge that I could skip around if any activity wasn't helping, well, that really helped me. After the table of contents, the first thing I noticed about the book is that there's a lot of pages that are completely black, sometimes with white text or white drawings. These pages feel slick with how much ink is on those pages, and I kind of hate the feeling of those pages, to be honest. The book does a good job at explaining what OCD is, what are obsessions and compulsions, and some common variations of each. It also says that people may be the average of the five people you spend the most time with, according to Jim Ron. The author says that they get some of their best traits and a few fears from these people. The next activity is asking who these people are for the reader. Obviously, for privacy reasons, I won't go into that myself, but then the reader is asked their OCD fears and any things you relate to OCD. The chapter up next is about the pros and cons, or the good and the bad, of your OCD. It's followed up by a chapter about avoidance and how that makes obsessive compulsive disorder worse, including something I did at the start of my own OCD journey with my therapist, ranking my obsessions and what the best versus worst case scenarios would be if these thoughts came true. The book includes various charts in regards to these concepts, with some title or column names being things like anxiety levels throughout the exposure response therapy, the process of not doing the compulsion, and thoughts or behaviors throughout, and activities to write about thought exercises about particular obsessions the author seemed to have. Then about halfway through was when I realized that this book seemed to fulfill the goal I originally had for it, to dig up old OCD things I did as a kid. Through the author talking about how they avoided singing a song so that it didn't come true for them, I realized seconds after reading this that I had done the exact same thing as a kid. Time for over-explaining my OCD through explaining my past. As a kid, I loved singing along to the radio. However, there was one song I avoided singing because I thought that by singing this song in particular, the universe or God or whatever would take the words seriously. The song? Corblun's I Want to Be in the Cavalry. I was terrified that by singing, I want to be in the cavalry if they send me off to war. I want a good seat under me like my forefathers before. I want a good mount when the bugle sounds and they hear the cannons roar. I want to be in the cavalry if they send me off to war. That there will be a guarantee that I will be drafted to some kind of war and die there, not wanting to be there in the first place. Sometimes I would start accidentally singing it. It was 2007 and it was a catchy country music hit. Can you blame me? And I would immediately stop as soon as I noticed and repeat in my head that I didn't want to go to war and that I liked my life as it was, thank you very much, and please don't make me a soldier. I think this was around the time when the news started really, really focusing on the war in Iraq. So that was big on my brain, despite Canada having significantly less involvement than the United States. 
I didn't even consider that this behavior could be OCD until reading through this workbook. Seriously, I think there are a lot of things I did as a kid that I thought were just a weird kid being weird when it was actually OCD. And I think it can be hard to tell for me, at least, as subconsciously, I think that if it's not stereotypical OCD, then it must not be OCD. Which is a terrible, terrible trap for a brain to fall into. The test for OCD is basically, do you have a thought which causes anxiety and won't leave your head until you do something probably irrational? You might have OCD! Or, to put it in a way for child me, do the what if questions cause you to be scared and anxious until you do something weird to make it stop? You might have OCD! Usually with OCD as a kid, I find even asking or answering yes to the first half of the question could be enough. Back to the book, though. It reinforces that obsessions, those what-if thoughts that won't go away, they're just thoughts. And honestly, that is another really good reminder. When I'm in the thick of it with OCD, those what-ifs seem catastrophic and world-ending. The reminder, the mantra, that these are just thoughts can be really calming and helpful. Because that's all the obsessions are. Thoughts. The book goes through some more specific exercises, like an ERP-based version of Would You Rather, which, as someone whose OCD doesn't go anywhere near that, was a bit weird, and was one of the numerous activities that just didn't hit home, followed closely by one that did, listing relaxing or comforting activities for when ERP gets to be a bit much, or, as the book states, because OCD can get worse when you're stressed. From there, the book focuses on both revisiting charts established earlier, as well as asking the same question in a few different ways. Can you stop your obsessions by doing the opposite, or decidedly not performing the compulsion? And before the last tenth of the book, I think, is filled with charts and previously established activities, it asks one last thing of the reader. What would you do without OCD? Overall, I think it's a solid workbook, and it got me to view my OCD and my journey with it a bit differently. Honestly, as I stated throughout this review and talk through the book, there are probably just as many activities that I had done myself, or at least hit home as there are ones that fell flat or didn't quite hit the mark for me. And with a disorder as personalized as OCD, I feel that that is to be expected. The self-help diary had a lot of personal entries from Charlotte Dennis's journey with OCD. And considering OCD is pretty infamous for latching on to things that you care about the most, I feel that putting out this book was brave of Dennis. And because OCD is so personalized, it makes a lot of sense that specific exercises focused around particular obsessions didn't always work for everyone. Would I recommend this book? Yeah. It might not be perfect, but I don't really think any book is. OCD may be personal, but there are a good amount of generalized charts and exercises that can help a person through OCD. I used a fair amount of these charts, some near exactly, to help manage my own OCD long before I knew about this book. So I can say that stuff here works. So go for it. And as the book says, don't feel pressured by any particular activity. Some of them are actually pretty fun. If you have any topics about LGBTQIA+, or mental health stuff you'd like to see covered, please let me know down in the comments. As always, resources will be in the description below. Thanks for watching the OCD MB. Stay safe out there.